Let's start the song. This is the last uh, lecture for this seminar. Also, uh, we'll be talking about economy and business in this lecture, the last one. Firstly, let me ask you, how was your debate? Any principles you guys got? Huh? There are four main, that debate that I picked for you guys had four or five main clear ideas. Uh, but before that, did anyone talk about the police? The policeman? Anyone? What team? Put your hand. Talk about the policeman. Okay? 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 This debate is much surrounded about the policeman a little bit because yes, you, you could actually make a whole argument about how the police feel, respond, think. Uh, you don't know the police is not as the highest rank level in the government. Usually, a lot of policemen come from uh, army soldiers that actually cannot get in the army. So they went to the army academy, try to learn, somebody they fail, they want to be that policeman is something a bit not high rank as military as well. Police is quite sad, to be honest. They are an institution that doesn't receive much funding uh, as much. For example, like their equipment is not the best high-tech equipment at all, like the army does receive, or even like, you know, uh, secret services or special uh, agencies get more equipment than the police, actually. So police has, it's not the highest rank. So if you talk about the social role or the state role, right, as an idea argument, privatization, what's the nature of it, right? How does the social interact with the actors and the police? We have four ideas we're going to talk about. It. So, but then careful, this debate is, in this debate, you must be able to flow the logic because you're trying to privatize something. Which means you have to be able to show me that it is privatization in your proposition, okay? Privatization is a common tool. It's a common tool that we use in government. So government prioritized already in today's world, okay? How? In the U.S., we prioritize prisons. Prisons in the U.S. are prioritized, okay? Firefighting, okay? Firefighting is prioritized in the U.S. in some states already, okay? Actually, there are some countries that actually prioritize water utilities. So water companies, is more than one company that provide water services to the state. Now be careful. The word privatize means that these, com these companies are able to use or to manage that facility or that function for a limited time a year. For example, like five years, 10 years, 20 years. Usually it's long term because it's quite a large investment, right? So 10, 20 years, that person will be using or managing the facility. What does the state get? Get money. So for example, when you bid, to manage that, they have to pay a large amount of money to the state. They also pay tax. They also get other benefits. The state can still protect, can still put the law above them, control them, manage them, yeah? But they just are the person on the ground working for them. So that's privatization, okay? So, but you've got to debate about that. You've got to talk about what privatize and not privatize because that's economy. That's equal 101. And that's my first lecture about uh, privatization. Motions that are about privatize. So privatize the forest, privatize nature, privatize the water, all these things, right? Now, you have to be careful because privatize sounds good, okay? Sounds good, right? There are mostly three main directions that we will use, three main. Number one, state, state uh, manage. State government manage themselves, okay? That's one approach, state manage. Number two, state enterprise. Means what? State and a company work together to be a state enterprise. It is a separate autonomy. So it's like the state, is, it's, it's like under the state, right? But it's self-managed. It is self-state enterprise. You can search it online you want. So what is called state managed. What, second is state enterprise. And third is privatization. It mean you sell that business to the corporation to the private sector instead. So that's our three main uh, direction that usually you will do so. Uh, right now, there are motions that you want to privatize your oil or your energy. What does that mean? Which means when the country has oil, has energy, should we prioritize it or not, right? An example in like Japan. You do know the nuclear power plant that has happened, right? That was what happened. 
that was private, privatized. A company managed it. Actually, it's not interesting. The infrastructure that was constructed with that plant was a co was a partnership with the government and a company. They both created together. So it was more like a state company managing, right? But it's still owned by the state. The, the property, the land, the entire nuclear power plant. But the Japanese government hired a corporation to manage it. And that's, and that's how when you get the private sector to manage that power plant instead, okay? So there's also an example to do so. But be careful, that may not be privatization. Privatization would mean all power plants will be privatized. You understand? It's not like only one building. One building could be hired, could be subcontracted, another term. Privatized would mean the entire industry of that, or entire business of that, is all privately managed for a certain amount of years, 20 years, 30 years. So if I say we should privatize energy, would mean that the entire energy business for Japan would be privately managed for them. That's totally different. Okay? Now, economy firstly is that what's the difference in this? Let's talk about money wants. Okay? Privatization is very quick, which means you can earn a lot of money to the state. Companies pay that money to you, lump sum. What is the bidding process? B I D I N G, bidding, bidding, which means they, it's not like you can just ask them, can I get this job? This must be a bidding process. I'm the government, these three ladies are three companies. They must put, I will turn my criteria, they put an envelope in that with their proposal and a money, uh, a certain money amount in that. I open this envelope at the same time. Firstly, I check criteria. So, so which criteria passes? You pass, you pass, you don't pass, you cut out. Okay? Then the second level, I open money. And which one is the cheapest month? The cheapest price will get my bid. Simple. So that's how you find the bidders, right? So envelope, three companies, check criteria. Criteria is based on the, com on, on, on the country. They make these documents, right? Actually, some documents are called TOR, Term of Arrangement, TOR. That's actually is a term that government institution that wants to get bidders to come in, they'll make a TOR, Term of Arrangement. Right? And TOR arrangement are documents that sent to companies said that these are my requirements. You can send these documents to us if you want and we'll and can bid for it. Okay? So let's say company A got this bid. What happens next? Usually in the TOR they will say that you have to pay 10% of profit or 20% of profit that you make every year to the government. Right? So they so they pay the government. So it's not like you get a lump sum only. You get one lump sum amount, and you get tax and all this money frequently. All these terms, T-E-R-M, are from the government. They make the terms. So you follow, right? Don't forget, these companies are still under the law, right? So you can still manage them. So it is a very good process, and you, it, it, it's also very uh, well managed. It is a normal tool, to be clear. It is a normal tool that we use in governments as well because it is because why government now have limited resources correct limited resources have limited people limited time all these limitations of government force government to actually find other ways to provide better services to its people and priority is a mechanism a tool that they can use sometimes they use state enterprise the second one already okay State enterprise would mean they partnership with a company outside. So example, right? Let's say uh, Thailand has a state government for telecom, communication, right? Then I partner with a Japanese company, the telecom. I make another company. I make another separate company, you know? This separate company means 60% owned by Thailand, 40% owned by Japan. So it's still owned by the government, right? Right? Owned by the government. But the majority, uh, but it, it has the Japanese help support, state enterprise, okay? Which also means state-owned, but managed like a corporation, managed like a private company, right? And that's the, the reason it does that uh, now these days, because they want to have the you know, ability to make decisions and control and all those things. The problem though sometimes is this. State enterprise means some good, like the middle pathway, right, in the ground. You get, if you can see from the, from the private sector, the government as well. Sometimes it's hard to work because 
government and private sector think differently too, right? Uh, usually when you privatize, privatize because they want profit, they want money, they want intensive, right? So it's a very big debate that when you privatize uh, economies with different businesses, they want financial money as return. Government also make money, but government make money is not the, fir the first pri priority. The first priority, it could be social benefit instead, right? So that's the mentality of the debate. Government says social benefit first. Let's say you are a water company. Water, okay, water company. Water is very important, right? You need water, right? In a small village out there that is like 200 kilometers away, if you are a private company, you have a lower chance to go that far. Why? Because that 200 kilometers have only 10 people using the water. So if I make a pipeline there, it will cost me millions of yen to go there. And only five people will to use it. I may not go there because I lose money then earn money. But in the, in the public sector, I don't think about that. Those five people are my people. I need to give them water. I'll make that pipeline there. So that's the mentality difference of how corporations and actually state enterprise uh, will, will have that conflict among themselves sometimes. Now state enterprise, what's the wrong? Uh, about state run, like full government, right? That, that's the third one. A big problem is it because they're so lazy, <laughs> right? Because sometimes majority of countries, when you become a civil servant, because civil servant or like employee of the state, right? Civil servant or employee of the state, right? Those people never get fired. Technically, I never seen like usually if you work for the government, you don't get fired. You, you get transferred, <laughs> move around there and there and there and there and there, but you never get fired, right? That that's a problem because there is no incentive to improve, to be better, to like you know fully make customer service, fully help people maybe. So that's a problem as well. So private companies can fire people, correct? Can give benefit, can give high salary, can give bonuses. Government sometimes cannot. Now you know why government cannot give like more money to other departments? It's very simple. Because you have the Ministry of Finance, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, you have all these different ministries are working, right? They cannot say, Ministry, this one give high salary, this one give higher salary. It's not fair. The state has to be equal to all people, right? That is what the mandate of the state is. So every ministry or every department salary must be similar to each other itself. So if you are a state government institution, like water or electricity, and you need, like, you cannot say that these two departments have a higher salary than these two departments. Because it's unfair. Government is like a blanket policy. Okay, blanket policy means everyone can apply in one main scope. How about they do different? These two different, these two different. The problem is that actually some country you can get sued. The government can be sued because why? It's unfair justice. Why they're higher, why not higher than me? Why is unclear? Why is that, that that's different? And that's why stay sometimes think blanket, make it clear. So, but blanket will not be motivated, right? To work better, work best. So that's first part of this lecture about uh, economics, about privatization, state enterprise, and state run. Okay? Be careful because debates like this we also have right now about you want to prioritize energy, natural resources. Natural resources or like uh, trees in uh, timber logging, like you want to cut trees, right? All those things can be prioritized as well now, right, these days. And you, and you have to think about those things. That's one. Okay? So the second part is about trade. Okay? So first part is that prioritize, state enterprise, government. And that, why do we talk about this first? Because it is the same thing with the debate you just debated, privatization, right? So don't forget, when you want to prove privatization, you want to prove this argument, right? And you want to do a good debate, you also ask first, what is the state role? Is the state role to facilitate or to mandately do it? Different, huh? Facility means I find someone to do it. Mandate means I have to do it myself. If you do it yourself, you have two options. State enterprise, state run, correct? If you say, if you say that the state is a facility, you can prioritize. So that's the first argument that you have to be able to paint that picture first. You have to paint the picture as well that prioritization is a very normal tool that we use in government. Okay? And it's the best tool to, to, to use this effort. 
Three, you have to be able to show the nature of different factors. How, what is prioritization? What is this? What is this? And you're gonna compare, compare the benefits of it and show that this is the most benefit of all prioritization. Fourth, you must show me why police force is the best to use this method, right? And the problem of police force. So you gotta show me the problem of police force, and with this problem, priority can fix those problems as well. So it's so it's two questions. Number one, it is justifiable for the state to prioritize police force. Justifiable. It's okay, it's correct, it's right. Number two is that when you prioritize police force, the problem you say right now will go on disappear. It will be better, right? Those are two lines of thought in the debate you just debated a moment ago. Now we do train, okay, train. Now, what is free train? What is free train? What's free train? What's free train? Trade freely, free train. What's free train? What's free trade? Okay, the answer is not in my face. It's in your brain. Think, what's free trade? What's free trade? No tariff. Hmm? No tariff. No tariff. Okay, good. Free trade. Uh, let's, let's expand it. Free trade and free movement of people. Because there's two things right now that go together pretty well. Free trade, uh, no tariff, the river, sorry, means that you are allowed to sell products with no barriers, no barriers, right? No barriers, no obstacles, right? Tariff is an obstacle, is a barrier in trading, okay? Uh, so usually, free trade is, is trying to trade with another country as fairly as possible with there's no tariff, there's no tax uh, among, among each other, okay? But, there's a but now here. The but now is that, is there such thing as a free trade? Let's push it further back. Is there a such thing as a free trade? Yes or no, simple, yes or no. Free trade, does it exist or not in the real world? Yes, okay. Any no's? So is yes or no? Okay, yes people. Okay, I'll give you three seconds to make a choice. Is it yes? Is it no? Okay? Think. One, two, three. Yes, people, there's free trade. Raise your hand. High and proud. High and proud. Okay? Who said is no? Raise your hand. Okay? Ah. The thing is this free trade means that you are allowed to trade freely with another nation uh, to the extent that your products can compete in the other country's product easily. So Japanese products with no tax on, so example, XXX yen can enter US market immediately with no tax increase or tariff. Understand this first though, tariff or tax was there to make your product more expensive. Do you agree? XX price per yen, XXX shipping cost, XXX tariff. You add these three things up, becomes your end product pricing, okay, for Japanese product in the US. Compete with US products. Technically, Japanese product will be slightly the same price or maybe cheaper a little bit or more expensive even so, okay? Why? So that US products can sell easily or better than Japanese products. That was the logic of tariff. Then he said, no tariff. Fine, we will do it okay. That means what? Your Japanese product with shipping costs go to US, compete American easier, right? And better trade, right? Now the logic is this. Better, cheaper products mean what? Customer choice. So free trade usually comes come with an argument about free choice, quality product, client, customer can pick the good things, cheaper product, option for a client, for a customer, everything like that. So they couldn't like that, right? Sounds good. But there is no such thing as free trade. No. You know why? It's not about tariff. It became very smart. So it became conditions. Condition of trade. What is it? What I'm trying to say? Condition of trade. So let me give you an example of my country, Thailand. We have a, we actually 
actually export food. And you know in Thailand we sell many food, chicken, vegetables, everywhere in the world, okay? And sell shrimp. Now let's say the first argument happened. In the late 1990s, we export shrimp, frozen shrimp, they sell in big box, okay? To America. That's where Thailand's big business was. We had a free trade agreement. Free trade agreement. FTA is free trade agreement, okay? So we trade with America. They said, no problem, your shrimp can come to our country, no problem. Looks good, right? Thailand shrimp, why is shrimp? Compete with shrimp in the US? Oh, no problem, we'll be very well. Then they said, well, you know, you can't trade with us yet. You gotta protect your turtles first. Huh? Protect my turtles? What's, what's a relation of turtle? Because your nets that you collect the shrimp have turtles that were dying in them. So you don't fix the turtle problem, the turtle, the green turtle with the legs, right? If you don't fix that problem, you cannot trade our shrimp. Huh? What? <laughs> what happened? Uh, Thailand had to invest so much money to fix the turtle problem. More money, more money, more money, more money, more money. My price came increased. Even so, I, and I couldn't trade US for such a long time. So what happened? The US products could sell for a while, right? So the question then that they don't stop you, they delay you, delay you. They can't stop you, but they will delay you. Another example is this. We sell chicken. So actual chicken meat, frozen, sent to US as well, okay? What happened was this. So have you ever seen a chicken farm? No, right? Have you seen a chicken farm? So chicken farm, usually they will, so chicken farm, in one cage, usually it's a metal cage, metal cage, right? Steel, metal cage. There'll be a lot of chicken in the cage. Okay, so chicken, chicken, chicken. Uh, when, you, when you kill the chicken, you will kill it some, some way and actually get the meat and frozen, etc. right? The US government said, we can't do this. Free trade, yes, no problem. But number one, only four chicken in one cage. Huh? The cage must be made from plastic and clean and sterilized, okay? The chicken must die peacefully. You must open music before you kill the chicken softly. And you must kill it only in this neck, softly, so that it will slowly die to sleep and relax. Really, this is, this is the conditions they put forth. What happened? We have to chain all the cage, right? So buy cages, correct? We have to sterilize, so chemicals to so clean and make it hygiene. Number three, we must change how you kill the chicken to be proper their way. And your argument was that if the chicken is shot when you kill it, the meat will be poisoned. Ah, because it's actually it's quite true, I agree with them The black blood, people, even human beings, when we shot, when we pass away, we have black blood. Our blood becomes poison itself because we were shot, we were scared. She can have the same thing, they say. So you must only kill like this, like neck, and then sleep. You die. Right? So all these increase price. Increase what? Increase price of production. Right? Increase price of cost. So all these things made my chicken more expensive. And when I went to the US, what happened? Same price with America. What happened? Free trade, yeah, no barriers, but the condition became more and more and more and more. Now, there is a fifth flaw of this argument, this reasoning, that you may understand. The fifth flaw is this. They say their standard is higher. Even Jamie said it's very high as well. These standards are what? Production standards, uh, safety standards, environment standards, right? And these are the new condition of the world of trading now, okay? Which means what? Your product that doesn't have the environmental standard in the European Union cannot enter the European Union, right? And he said, we're not against you. You can always come if you become to our standard, right? And that's why the EU environment is very high standard, uh, also, in, uh, also in America as well. So these are conditional, I'm trying to tell you, that people say there's free trade. Barriers, yes. There's no barriers. But there are many conditions to make our prices more expensive itself as well. Okay? Now, what is, the, what is the solution of this? 
Now, what happened later on, the flip-flop I told you about the argument is this. It actually helps developing nations be what? Developed. You agree? Developing nation that had lower production uh, quality, that you may say, will have higher quality. Right? And that means production in that country improved better. Higher standard, higher quality, able to sell. So sometimes they say, if you can sell to Europe, you can sell to America, because that is also very high, right? But you can't, you can't imagine like how much it costs, because more technology uh, is from the West, it's from the high countries. So developing countries buy technology from America, even from Japan. We must buy your technology, and it costs money. And that costs money for us to make our product more expensive itself. So technically, you, technically, we call trade barriers can only delay. Delay to come in five, 10 years, but they can't stop you to come in. So it also means that a US product can develop faster. You kind of get me? I'm making, I'm trying to develop faster so that I become the US standard. America try to become even more higher in their standard. So they can sell against us as well, right? But the sad thing is this, in, in trade, what's the sad thing? Japan or developing countries or America or England or Europe can send, can send their products to India, can send products to China, to other countries with no problem, right? Because they are the higher standard. They come to us for five years that we cannot go to them. And that is how trade is unfair somehow uh, with the entire tra world trading block. Okay? Do you understand this trading situation? Okay? This trading would mostly come in debates. Debates now don't have a trip, like, it's, it, it won't be a debate about free trade FTA. I don't think so anymore. That was about eight years ago. But it would be, it would be a debate more about how that each country have bilateral agreements or multilateral, means they, would it be country to country agreeing each other, right? So Japan and Korea or Thailand or China have agreements per country and how you do the trade. Or, this is, this is the new stuff now. So we did prioritization, we did trade, we're doing one more now. We're doing economic blocks. Economic blocks. And that's different now. Economic blocks, right? When I could not trade with US, Japan, you know, uh, America, uh, Europe, for the high standard, I trade among myself, among myself, and that's economic block. Question then, question, now think about it. How many economic blocks are there in the world? Count, 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 think, think, think. What are they? How many economic blocks are there in the world? Uh, economic blocks, what do they mean? Let me be clear, economic blocks mean a group of countries that are together, that are majority for trading. Now, most blocks does trading, uh, many things, but if, if, if trading a part of it, it's a, it's a current block, okay? What are they? Come, one, what is it? Current block. Okay, current block, EU, good. EU is a current block, good. EU to add on right now, it started as, it is an economic block, and it is a geopolitical block as well, because it is the only block that has their own parliament as an EU parliament. But I would agree it's, 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 it's a trading block, right? Okay, good, what else? EU, what else? Huh? Hmm? And, yeah, the, the louder, louder. Mercosur, right? So that, and that's, that's South American trading block. That includes what countries? Uh, Brazil, Argentina, Peru, Cuba as well, too. I think Cuba as well. So South America has an own trading block. So EU, right? South America. What else? NAFTA. NAFTA, correct. North America trading block, which include Mexico, North America, and Mexico, uh, sorry, and Canada. Right? It's a few parts. What else? NAFTA, EU, ASEAN. Sorry, ASEAN. Yes. ASEAN, Southeast Asian, also a trading block as well. Okay? Anything else? 
Is that it? Is that it?